Hi, this is Yaroslav from ShareMarch.com and today we're going to talk about apps versus web parts. So especially after SharePoint conference, depending which speaker or session you went to, um, and in general in the community, there's a, uh, there's a bit of confusion about apps versus web parts and um, are apps replacing web parts. So I thought to put uh, three screencasts, one for uh, business users, which is today's screencast, one for developers and one for IT pros to kind of clear up some of the confusion around what are web parts versus uh, apps. So apps is a new concept in uh, SharePoint 2013 and if you're listening to this screencast you probably uh, are familiar with the web part concept which a lot of folks out there call oh it's an old concept it's no longer going to be used. So um, you probably know uh, both of the concepts so we're going to take a look at uh, both of them in action. So first one I wanted to talk about is the general uh, capabilities. So to add a particular, and this is uh, a publishing size, side but it can be a team side as well, to add the uh, app or a web part you would click this, you know, you would add the page on the team side or publishing side and you would click um, add a web part. So by default, the uh, web part uh, insertion uh, interface shows up, but if you click back here on insert, you also see this app part. So that's something that's, that belongs to apps. So web part option is still there. And it, as you can see, there's a variety of lists and libraries, uh, parts that you can add here, as well as custom and out of the box web parts. Uh, there's some new, there's some old uh, web parts. So if for, for those who say that you know web parts are no longer used, that's not true, right? So there's tons of out of the box new web parts that have been just created by Microsoft in SharePoint 2013 uh, that are available here. So if that wasn't if uh, if web parts were deprecated, that wouldn't be the case. Everything would be an app part. Now a little bit uh, a bit of a confusing part is uh, lists and libraries um, as they were known before are, have been sort of renamed to apps and uh, but the confusing part here is that you can add the view to lists and libraries from the app uh, from the web part interface and you can add them from the app part interface and that's a confusing part because folks are like okay so what am I inserting am I inserting the the app or am I inserting the uh, the web part and in fact you're just inserting a view to the list or document library right so lists and document libraries are created the same way um, apart from the fact that now to add a list or library you click add an app and that will take you to the same interface uh, as you use to add an actual app or, or the actual list or library, right? So that's, a, that's another confusing sort of a part. So that's, so that's general. Uh, in terms of capabilities, so from a capability standpoint, uh, apps are much limited than web parts, right? So web parts uh, run with, with a lot of trust and when you install when you add a web part right you have no choice really to say uh, whether you know you, you're just adding it and you have no idea what's the what's the access that the web part uh, may be accessing so for instance or maybe requesting so for instance if I'm adding this content editor web part um, you know it says that it's a content editor web part there's some description but you don't really know what it does when you're adding an app uh, you have a choice of uh, actually seeing what the app is requesting and and deciding okay is that is that enough or is that uh, is that something that I want to allow or not so if there's some list of permissions that you're not really sure you want to give it to, give to an app you probably uh, you, you can reject it at that point and if you're afraid that you know a developer of that app is somehow deceiving the system um, or disguising that they need one type of access versus in fact they need much higher type of access that's really not possible because the framework takes care of recognizing what type of access they have and uh, they have really the developer has no control over messaging that they put out there so that's about the capabilities some of the restrictions uh, now that's important to know that once so each app it's each instance of an app runs in its own sort of a uh, site collection so its own little uh, interface um, or its own placeholder on, on on your farm from from the from the user interface standpoint if I add a web part onto my page like I added this content editor web part if I insert some sort of a script uh, 
that script is going to execute on the page. And if that script, for instance, on this content editor, what parts has, you know, hide a particular part of the page or change the, uh, the look of the page um, or display some sort of a message right here, then that'll execute on the entire page. So from the web part, I can modify the look of other components. I can, I can somehow change the look of this uh, quick launch or header, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if it's an app, an app runs really, or, or an app part runs as an iframe. So really I have um, no control of accessing uh, the, the rest of the page f uh, from an app. So if I, if I have some sort of uh, um, elements that, um, you know, for instance, I wanna uh, drag around the, the, the page um, as a part of the user interface of, of, an app, of, a, of an app, I cannot do that. It's constrained as an iframe on the page. Another thing uh, that I wanted to point out is uh, uh, the installation. App infrastructure isn't really available uh, to all of the uh, um, to all of the versions of, of SharePoint. So, for instance, Foundation uh, SharePoint 2013 Foundation, as far as uh, it's so far been announced, right? It's the announcement may may change or the licensing model may change, but the way it's been announced so far is the foundation, the apps uh, infrastructure isn't supported. Apps won't really work everywhere. Where web parts can work on foundation or any or anything else is part of the core framework. In fact, for you to, for me, for ex for example, to run apps on this particular environment, um, which is the apps aren't configured in here, even though it's a server infrastructure, I need the particular configuration set up on my environment to add apps from an app store, right? To add apps from a SharePoint store. Where web parts is really something that you request your administrator to turn on the app and, uh, or turn on the particular web part or install a web part in the farm and it's available to uh, most of the sites. So in terms of uh, licensing, that's important to understand. Now, uh, sometimes you may think um, also uh, in terms of cost, right? So, and that's a huge benefit uh, for apps. Um, what's, what's likely to happen is because the entry level for an app store, for developers to create an app and put in an app store is rel relatively small, right? So when developer, you know, a developer can create an app, put it in an app store, if you navigate to an app store, you have access to all of those apps and you can, uh, you know, you can see that a lot of them are free and the ones that are paid, you can, um, you can, you have access to those at relatively small cost. As you can see, the, the, the apps here are something like twenty nine ninety nine, right? That's they aren't really, you know, a couple of hundred dollars or a couple of thousand dollars, it, which would be the case um, if you if you were to um, ask a developer to create a web part for you. What you can expect is in the future, you're gonna have uh, more apps um, uh, here available and you can add them to your, uh, to your site relatively and customize your site at a relatively uh, less expensive cost versus uh, adding web parts. Uh, so that's, that's really uh, main points I wanted to cover. Uh, there's, uh, there's a couple of more screencasts coming up on what's the difference uh, between web parts and apps. Uh, for developers on AD Pros, if you uh, belong to one of those audience, I encourage you uh, to check out uh, those as well and find out what's the difference between development and, and capabilities uh, of apps versus web parts.